Good morning, everyone. Uh, to those of you who's, uh, who are joining us already on our Facebook, on our other live stream uh, platforms, thank you so much uh, for joining me this morning. As you have already heard the introduction I uh, did earlier, I'm very excited to have our leader the official opposition of the official opposition, Andrea Horvath, join me today in Scarborough uh, to talk about our very new housing pl uh, plan which is an incredible plan uh, for not just, uh, you know, folks who are renting homes right now, uh, folks who are uh, struggling uh, to find an affordable home, but also for the next generation to actually imagine of buying a home sometime soon. I'm also excited to have a local resident from Scarborough Southwest, Mohammed Yunis Mia, who will be talking about his story, a tenant who lives in Scarborough Southwest. So without further ado, I will hand over to Andrea Horvath, uh, the leader of our official opposition, to talk about the plan. Uh, thanks uh, very much, Dolly. I, I appreciate the uh, the kind introduction. But before I get started, I do want to just acknowledge the serious uh, news that's coming out of Scarborough with the number of long-term care homes that are seeing significant outbreaks. Uh, another 29 folks uh, lost their lives uh, in long-term care at Kennedy Lodge. Uh, Rockcliffe has got over 100 folks uh, infected. Uh, apparently, Craigley Extended Care in Rouge Valley is also uh, struggling with an outbreak. So I just uh, I think it's important uh, that we acknowledge that um, that people are in a bad spot. Uh, that um, you know our frontline workers are doing their their darndest. But um, you know, M Mr. Ford didn't protect long-term care in the first wave, and he certain certainly hasn't done it in the second wave. And my heart goes out to um, all those uh, residents as well as family members who are who are dealing with these uh, these frightening situations and these tragic situations once again. Um, on that note, I do also want to um, uh, start by saying thank you to uh, uh, Mohammed uh, Yunus uh, Mia for being with us uh, this morning. It's uh, really great to uh, to have you uh, uh, be here to tell a little bit about your challenges with uh, with the housing that your your um, you and your family are, are dealing with. So thanks for being here, uh, Mohammed. Uh, I think it's really important to start by saying that we have a belief that everybody deserves a stable, safe, comfortable place to call home in the community that they love. A home you can afford, uh, a home that fits your family and that meets your needs. And for a lot of folks, home ownership has been out of reach, along with the stability and financial security that come with it. A lot of families are stuck in rental units that are run down or even unsafe. Other families are forced to live in cramped conditions, unable to afford a bigger home that can accommodate their growing or multi-generational families. People are priced out of the neighborhoods they love, forced to move away from family, away from the place where they grew up. And at the same time, affordable housing and assisted living spaces have become harder and harder to find. Ontario's wait list for affordable housing has grown to more than 185,000 families and 35% of the people waiting are seniors. You know, Ontarians know that we didn't get here overnight. Finding a good home you can afford has been getting harder and harder for decades. The Liberals had 15 years to make things easier for Ontario families, and they chose not to. They let landlords hike the rent in between each tenant. They cut public housing to help pay for corporate tax cuts. They let billionaire speculators snatch up the bulk of properties, forcing Ontario families to compete over what was left. Over just a couple of years, Doug Ford has taken things from bad to worse by scheming to help his billionaire investor and developer buddies. He cancelled rent control on new units, made it easier to evict people. And he was busted trying to let developers pave over Ontario's green belt three separate times. He's not helping you, he's making choices that help them. Every year, first under McGuinty Wynn and Del Duca's Liberals, then under Doug Ford's Conservatives, Ontario's housing crisis has gotten worse and worse. Well, no more. I'm running for Premier in 2022 because Ontarians deserve so much better, and I know that together we can do better. And that's why I released the Homes You Can Afford plan, as, as Dolly mentioned. It's my detailed plan and platform commitment to ensure that there's a market of good, stable homes that people can actually afford to rent or buy 
to protect renters from bad apple landlords, and to make sure every Ontarian can find a good place to call home in the community that they love. Today I'm here virtually in Scarborough to talk about my plan to help families find and keep a good stable place they can afford whether they are renters or homeowners. No one should have to squeeze their growing or multi-generational family into a home that's cramped or crumbling because skyrocket housing prices make anything else unaffordable. But that's a reality for a lot of people in Scarborough. Far too many families find themselves in precarious situations, living in fear of their landlord raising the rent or throwing them out to jack up the rent for the next tenant. To help families facing high, sky high prices to get into good rentals they can afford, we are going to help 311,000 households across Ontario pay the rent with direct financial support. We're going to apply rent control to all units and put in place a series of updated protections to stop the bad apple landlords from taking advantage of families. For families who would like to buy their first home in the community they love, but find themselves priced out no matter how much they work and save, my Home in Ontario program will help by sharing the cost of the down payment with you. And because we know that renting extra space in your home is how a lot of people help pay their bills, we're going to create a new Residence Rights Act to help homeowners easily, inexpensively, and safely convert basements, unused garages, or spare floors of their home into affordable rentals. These are a few of the ways an NDP government will ensure that today's Ontarians have the same opportunities many of our parents and grandparents had. A chance to plant roots for your family and then watch them grow. No matter where you live, your age, your identity or ability, no matter what your financial situation is, you deserve a good, safe, secure place to call home. A home you can afford. For you, your family, for the next generation, this is a plan that offers hope. And together, we can make it happen. So thank you very much for uh, hearing my uh, prepared remarks, and I'm going to pass it over to uh, Mohamed Yunus Mia for his uh, his uh, explanation of his struggles with uh, with his uh, housing situation. Mohamed, thank you so much for giving me opportunity. Uh, good morning, hi, hi everybody. So my name is Mohamed Yunus Mia. Uh, I lived in a Tijal place. It is located at uh, Scarborough near Victoria Park, Victoria Park and Pharmacy. So my story is uh, during the pandemic, and I mean, I'm the finance background. I'm working in downtown. So uh, during the pandemic, I got COVID, got laid off, and my family almost lost our apartment. Our one bedroom apartment is already too small for my three kids who are doing the school online from home. We need to bigger place to live, but we are having a hard time finding home we can afford. On pandemic period, I got I got the COVID. Uh, that 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 time I got the eviction eviction notice from my landlord. It is so terrible and scared and sorry me, sad for me. I, I cannot tell you, explain myself. It is, it is, I'm getting a hard time there. That's the situation. Uh, after that, after one week, I, and when I, I'm feeling good, I paid my rent, uh, April and May. And, after two months, I'm joining the tenant union to fighting for landlord for renting. And I'm, I'm holding two month rent, June and July. Still, we are fighting. Still, we are fighting for the uh, for tenant. It is very difficult to survive. We are looking for the good home to live better good neighborhood. That's why we need a good home for better living, for better future, for better kids. It is it is very difficult for us to survive 
the surrounding the area because of the covid i am i'm trying to go several times to my landlord office to tell them i need two bedroom they said uh, we don't want to give you the two bedroom because you have no job i lost my job still i'm waiting for my job they said we have a less hour we are not hiring more the landlord they don't care they misbehave they are rude always all people like me i am not sufferer every people are sufferer more than 60% people are sufferer for for paying rent rent because of the covid they have no job Well, Mohammed, thank you. Um, thank you for explaining to us the struggles that you and your family are facing. And you know, it, it seems to me that a, there's a couple of things that uh, uh, that we would be able, with our plan, to address. You know, really, really quickly. I mean, uh, you know, first and foremost, can I just say that uh, uh, that there's no way that landlords should be evicting tenants in the midst of COVID-19. We're now in the second wave. Uh, people have been. you know losing their um losing their jobs losing their hours uh trying to make it make a go of things on some of the supports that the federal government has come up with uh, but Doug Ford basically has has let landlords off the hook and 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 allowed evictions to to happen in, in Ontario even when he was pretending that there was a moratorium or a ban on evictions that wasn't true uh people were still getting evicted uh, you know tenants were still getting evicted uh, when uh, when there was a, a ban on evictions and now um and now it's it's even worse because there's uh, uh there's nothing at all for people to to uh to do to fight against a, uh an eviction and so there you know there are things that that covid has brought uh, that have made things worse and more precarious for families like yours but but when a when a, when you have a young family um you have a, you know three children uh and you're cramped into a a, a one bedroom um and their kid your kids are at home studying and uh you know staying home from school to study and you have a you know one bathroom in the home and uh and and your you know your income is so uh reduced uh, uh and your job is now gone i mean we 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 have to be able to have a uh, you know an opportunity in ontario excuse me in ontario for people to uh be able to have uh, housing that meets the needs of their families you shouldn't have to be cramped into a you know a small apartment building with or a small apartment with only one bedroom um and and you know having a hard time making ends meet uh that's that's just not acceptable so so there's a number of things that we need to do to um to address that and our plan uh does exactly that i mean our plan creates more affordable housing units it creates more uh, uh subsidies for people to uh to help them uh pay the rent uh it um it it helps to cool off the housing market to keep um you know to keep uh, housing stock available for people to be able to afford to buy a home so the prices just don't keep rising and rising and rising we have a um an opportunity to um in our plan uh to have the government help with a down payment uh to be able to help families get into the uh the housing market so it's um I mean it's a plan that would really I think in many ways uh, bring some opportunity and some hope um to folks like you Mohammed and I know that in Scarborough and you know across many parts of our province uh people are really struggling and I mean and your home is like the place from which you do everything else right from which your kids are able to study and from which you you know can can uh, uh can go to work or 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 maintain a job uh where 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 your family can you know have all of the you know the celebrations and the um you know the 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 kind of the building of your lives uh in a safe secure and uh affordable place and that's what we're we're hoping to do uh with our plan. So thank you so much for sharing your uh your story from with us. Joseph Hello. from Toronto TV. Okay. Joseph, yes. please go. Ahead. Hi everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh it's good to have your you have a plan for the housing for the affordable affordable housing for the Ontarian. It's good news. But the other thing is that during the pandemic you know that uh, some people pay a rear in rents and also uh, i agree that uh, the government should protect the people of ontario but on the other hand some small landlord maybe they <coughs> they try their hard earned money to buy a unit for renting and to pay for the mortgage 
So suddenly the, the renters the, did not pay the rent. How can they pay for the, <coughs> the mortgage? So my question is that as a leader of the major opposition party, how you balance the renters' rights, the benefit, or also the small landlords' rights and benefit? Thank you. No, thanks very much, Joseph. And you're, you've, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, and in fact, one of the things with our plan during COVID that we were trying to get the Ford government to do uh, is to was to actually uh, help tenants directly pay their rent. So what we wanted the government to do was put in place a, 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 a plan to uh, to provide the uh, the uh, the rent, uh, I think it was, I'm trying to remember because it was a while back that we actually asked the government to do this, I think it was 80% uh, of your rent would be covered by the government and that way you didn't have to worry about paying the rent and your landlord didn't have to worry about paying the mortgage. Uh, so we, uh, we've always recognized that there's a balance there. And that's why when we wrote, that's, uh, so that was, that's the first thing. I mean, through COVID, absolutely, we tried to get the Ford government, uh, to help with, with help tenants, uh, residential tenants pay their rent so that not only would they not have to worry about it and could use their, their reduced finances because lots of people as Mohammed was saying lost their jobs or had their hours cut back uh, and and it took a while before some of the um, financial programs that the federal government put in place uh, actually kicked in so very early on we were saying to the Ford government you have to directly support the tenants uh, and that then helps those small landlords and the big landlords too I mean it, it just it just made sense all the way around but even in this plan uh, we've been really really careful uh, to uh, to acknowledge that um, that not every that there's you know there are some bad there are some bad apple landlords right there you know there are some bad apple landlords uh, but there are also a lot of uh, a lot of landlords who are you know who are small landlords who I like you said have either you know bought a property and 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 use that uh, equity building as a, as a way to kind of you know make a living and support their families and uh, and and, uh, and we know that there are lots of people who who in, in wanting to buy a house, uh, build in the idea of having a rental income to help pay the mortgage in, in, like in the home, like in a basement apartment, for example, or another uh, type of, uh, arrangement. But, uh, but we're, so we're, we try very hard in our, in our plan, um, to uh, acknowledge that, uh, that that's, that's the case and that we want to be respectful of, uh, of uh, the need of tenants, uh, but also, uh, you know, understand that the, that the particularly the smaller mom and pop type landlords uh, need to be um, uh, need to be respected as well. Thank you. Do you have a follow up question, Joseph? Uh -huh. Sorry, I just have another question. You mentioned that uh, uh, Andrew Horvath, you are running for premier in 2020, 2022. Does that mean that uh, your election campaign starts today? Well, you know what? I, I think um, it's a really great question, and I want to say that I I, uh, I really think people deserve to have some hope um, that things can get better than where they are now. Uh, so, you know, we decided that uh, uh, that people are struggling, and they're struggling worse with COVID. Uh, and um, a couple of weeks ago, we unveiled our first platform plank, uh, and that was on overhauling our long-term care system, so that you know, people who uh, are living in long-term care and uh, lo loved ones of people who live in long-term care have some hope that 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 system can actually provide the quality of care and the dignity that people deserve uh, and, and to provide hope for Ontarians that we can actually overhaul long-term care uh, to make it to make it a place where people don't dread having to go or, or where people don't feel guilty that they're sending uh, their loved ones to long-term care and, and so you know we thought that another important thing to do uh, is to show Ontarians that there's hope for the future in terms of being able to afford a home uh, being able to uh, you know if you choose to rent being able to rent a place that meets your needs or your family's needs uh, so we are very consciously uh, showing people that you know we've got a year and a half a little more than a year and a half to the next election we don't have to have another you know ford government that continues to make things worse for everyday people uh we don't have to have another um you know Stephen del duca uh you know kathleen win uh, dalton mcginty government that after 15 years did nothing uh to help folks uh with uh, home ownership or with affordable rentals uh, or with 
uh, or with more affordable housing for folks that are, have real income, uh, you know, challenges or supportive housing. Um, these are long standing problems. They've been around for decades. Uh, and, and Stephen Del Duca is not going to solve them. Uh, we already know that because they didn't for the last 15 years prior to the last election. And Mr. Ford has taken us backwards. Um, you know, they, they've made things worse and not better. They're handing out goodies to their developer friends and to billionaires while people like Mohammed struggle. And so it, we very consciously decided, I very consciously decided, uh, we need to to say to Ontarians, it doesn't have to be this way and that we can actually do much, much better. And here's how we'll do that.